I'd just like to welcome everyone to the 11th um, Australasian CFA Conference. And I'd also like to say it's an absolute pleasure to be here today and celebrate, and celebrate the conference theme, Life in the Fast Lane. I'd like to start with a little background. I was born and raised here in Sydney. I've grown up and been surrounded by an active family. And I'd be comfortable in saying I was born into a rugby loving family. My dad played for Willie many years ago and even to this day tries to make me watch DVDs or what were VHSs um, of his heydays <laughs> playing for Willoughby. Um, my uncle who played with him still plays today for the Golden Oldies. I think that's more for the social aspect more than anything. And uh, my, my earliest memory of rugby was watching my brother play one Saturday. I would have been maybe two or three years old. My nana tells me this story about how I was pulling on her hand saying, I want to play, I want to play. Um, and her response was simple and straightforward, you're too young. But it was then that I had this love for rugby and not only did that love for rugby help me or aspire me to um, uh, exceed in that sport but also it gave me a balance in life. Along with many rugby <coughs> and schoolyard stories, <coughs> excuse me, my childhood memories are filled up with funny games my mum used to make me play, like constantly having parties so we could just blow up balloons, jumping on the trampolines, <laughs> Or, and, um, and always been active and uh, all, one, one weekend encouraged to uh, play a wind instrument so I brought home a, a trumpet and I think it lasted the weekend before Dad said get that thing out of here. <laughs> so just being active, my parents had me living in the fast lane from the very beginning. Moving on from that, I was very privileged to attend Knox Grammar School from 2001 to 2006 and I'm, I'm extremely proud to say that in year 12 I was selected to pl uh, play in the Australian schoolboys rugby team. From there I attended Sydney University and graduated with an arts and science degree with majors in business management and Australian history. It may come as no surprise that when I tell you in between lectures and tutorials I was also there to play a bit of rugby. Along the way I managed uh, to win five premierships with Sydney University plus selection in the Australian under 20s um, team in 2008 and 2009 which led to my first professional contract with the ACT Brumbies, where I moved down there in 2008, spent two, uh, spent two years down there, applying my trade and uh, learning under the most consistent hooker in today's rugby, Stephen Moore. Uh, once I spent those two years down there, I moved across to Perth in 2010 to chase further opportunity and, and, and I signed with the Western Force. I've been there ever since, and where today I've played 76 Super Rugby games. Last year I achieved one of my ultimate goals and has been selected to play for the Wallabies. I made four appearances before I thought it was a smart idea to tear my peck off the bone which required a season ending surgery. Now when I was first asked to be the National Ambassador for Cystic Fibrosis Australia I found it quite daunting. I think I was asked first in 2008 and at the time I said I wasn't ready. Um, I said I, I don't think I fulfilled what I have in my own career being rugby um, <clears throat> excuse me, before wanting to take on such a, uh, a prolific um, position as being a national ambassador. I wanted to achieve my goals first and foremost and be known as Nathan Charles rugby player ra rather than Nathan Charles the CF sufferer. So daunting is a word that I came up with to, to sum it up. Not knowing the full ramifications, ramifications it could have on me personally, my family and the people that have followed my story. I realised I'd have to address questions such as, will I be looked at differently? Will people know what CF is? And will I still be able to achieve my ultimate goal and play for the Wallabies? The answer to these questions was yes. People did look at me differently. And if people didn't know what CF was, I was sure going to tell them. Now I count myself as an extremely fortunate person. I play, prof I play professional rugby, which means I have a, <clears throat> I have a public profile and I'm living the life I've wanted since I knew what rugby was at, at, at the age of two. And I don't take this for granted. I also feel one of my major responsibilities as ambassador in this position is to create a wider awareness of what cystic fibrosis, fibrosis is, how it affects people and how others can help. Along the way, if my story has inspired individuals and families, then I'm, I'm truly overjoyed, but I want, but I want more. Yes, cystic fibrosis is an extremely debilitating, debilitating condition and unfortunately in some cases leads to an early death. But I don't want this to define me or limit me as to what I can achieve in my life. 
I hope that by me being the first person in the world with cystic fibrosis to play a professional contact sport motivates people to want more and not be defined by this condition. That leads me on to my next point. This attitude was something I picked up from my family in the early years. I'm very lucky to have amazing parents who are here today um, and parents who taught me that there is no barrier too big, nothing that I can't conquer and if you want something bad enough you'll do whatever it takes to get there. I still remember running up hills and thinking no, I, I want to quit and, and mum would just say it's easy to quit and those words stuck true. And this is something I carry through to today. I've never used cystic fibrosis as an excuse. Instead, due to my fantastic team at home, my family, I learned that knowledge is power and I was taught to be proactive, not reactive. Although it does take mum quite a bit of nagging to get things done at some stages. I thought moving across to Perth, uh, that would stop, but it doesn't. <laughs> Although she does come over and clean my house and cook food for me, so thanks mum. Now if it wasn't for my parents drilling that into me, taking me to doctors and clinics and setting up such an incredible team of clinicians and support network, I don't know where I would be today. I still remember my parents and my two doctors when at, at my young age, Dr Peter Cooper, who I believe is here today, and Dr Malcolm Willis, working in tandem to ensure that my medic I was getting the right messages, taking the right medications and doing the right things. Again, this was quite, quite troublesome as a, as a young child as I wanted to rebel quite often. But knowing that this had a major influence on me and effect on me because all these different people who I respected immensely were all reinforcing the same message. The impact and value of teams and working to get together under, this, under the same understanding is invaluable. This can relate to many aspects of life. It was only on Friday morning at the Western Force we had a meeting at training about how we wanted to be seen as a team. <coughs> common themes that came up were being united, working for a common goal, and that communication is a non-negotiable. And I'm sure in business, in sport, and in life, those are three pretty important keys to, be having, to having a successful team. Now for, the, for, you, for those of you rugby fans out there, we all know the backs don't like to stick their head in dark places. It's, they want to keep their hair nice and tidy and uh, not get too dirty. <coughs> All that tough stuff safe for us more manly forwards. <laughs> but even if all the backs have to do is catch and pass, in a team everyone has a role to play. As, as much as I think I'm, I'm, I'm quick and I can do what all they do, the reality is I'm not that quick. So I've got to make sure someone can finish off the tries. And as long as we're working, in t working as a team and working towards a common goal, and we're united <clears throat> in our belief in one another, and we each play our part, the sky is the limit as to what we can achieve. I'd like to finish by saying how great it is to look around and see so many fantastic people here all with the same vision. Whether you're a sufferer, a parent, a family mem member, a doctor or a friend, we all want the same goal. We are all on this journey on this life in the fast lane. And I believe that by banding together, we will accelerate the fulfilment of our vision of lives unaffected by cystic fibrosis. Thank you.